Mr. Speaker, it would be remiss of me if I did not lend my support to the motion on the floor as presented by the member for Castries East and Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Um, I seek your leave, Mr. Speaker, to first congratulate the Ministry of Education and the Education Fraternity for the new principal of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, Dr. Charles. I want to congratulate the Ministry of Education and the Education Fraternity for the new Chief Education Officer. These are very critical positions that will help translate the education system, transform the education system by strengthening the leadership in, that, in these areas. And as I say, Chief Education Officer, it really means Chief Education Officer, Mr. Speaker. And if you are familiar, Mr. Speaker, with the Education Act of 1999 and the powers that are conferred to the Chief Education Officer, a heavy burden rests on the shoulder of the Chief to move and shake the education system. Mr. Speaker, having given 41 years of my best years in education, I feel very passionate, very moved when I see the kind of contribution that this government is putting in education. 5,400,000 to assist schools that were affected by breath. In addition to everything else that the Minister of Education has articulated in support for education, it clearly indicates that this is a government that looks at the future. And the future of this country lies in the hands of the next generation. Yes, we will build roads, we will put infrastructure, but the human resource capacity is what will make that difference. And by investing in education is a huge investment in our development. I want to thank the minister for including Debara School. That's a school many years ago, the last administration was thinking of closing down. But if you close that school, you destroy the community. And therefore, we have to ensure that there is life in that community. And this is a community that is rich. It has opportunities for tourism, for economic activity, and everything else. And it is close, close to the mountain that has provided the best waters when St. Lucia had no water. That's the, the, the La Sosia mountain and Debara sits at the base of La Sosia Mountain. And there are some things when we get into the house, Mr. Speaker, that we forget. But when the election results were called on the 26th of July, 2021, the first box that was announced came from Debara, Mr. Speaker. And I want you to check your election report and you will see what happened in that first box. And therefore, everything rolled after. Mr. Speaker, the parliamentary rep for Beaufort South also speak to the issue of climate change. And we are now in the hurricane season. And we have to brace up ourselves. We don't know what will come in the next few months. We are in the month of August, the rainy season. And we're doing some repairs, we're doing some work, but we don't know what will happen because children are getting ready, parents are getting ready to send their children to school. And therefore, we have to look at the bigger picture with regards to climate change and how we brace ourselves. Many years ago, this government established education for all. At the international level, the cry was for education for all. But afterwards, 
some countries were able to achieve education for all, Mr. Speaker. But they shift the goalposts to quality education. And that is what this government is focusing on, not just access, but what type of education the children will be receiving. And by this contribution, Mr. Speaker, it is a contribution to improving the quality of education. And when you improve the conditions for teachers and principals to work, what we call the working conditions of teachers and principals, it becomes the learning condition for students. And it is also an economic contribution to parents. So this money that the Prime Minister has put aside there is to improve the environment for the teachers and the principals to perform. And it also improves the environment for the children to learn. And I'm hoping that, Mr. Speaker, that the Ministry of Education is already paying attention to a new trend that may develop. And I listened to the results of the last CPEA exam. And we are noticing that our boys are improving. And people are already attributing that to technology because the boys pay a lot of attention to the computer. And uh, formative evaluation, where we do not have this one-time exam, you either pass or fail. We assess the children throughout, and they are using the technology, the laptop. All these things are already beginning to show signs of improvement in the education system. Mr. Speaker, I want to commend the Ministry of Education because last year, when school reopened, the Honorable Prime Minister gave every cabinet minister the morning before cabinet. And he asked us to go and visit the schools in our constituencies to ensure that everything was intact. And if there were any difficulties, bring it to the cabinet the same morning. That's the day school reopened. And I visited all the seven schools in the Babono constituency, Mr. Speaker. And I'm pleased to report to the Ministry of Education and to you, Mr. Speaker, in this honorable house that every single school I visited said this is the first time school had reopened in a long time and they did not have any major challenges, Mr. Speaker. And that was because the Ministry of Education ensured that the repairs and the minor things that were affecting the teachers and students, they attended to that during the summer holidays. And again, we are seeing that happening with the Prime Minister putting the funds up front to assist the Ministry of Education to, so that the children can go back into an environment, the teachers can go back into an environment that is decent to work and to learn. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate the six primary schools in Barbado, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if the infrastructure had anything to do with it, the conditions and the laptop, but this is the first time in history that all the primary schools in Barbado scored above the national mean in the CPA exam. And they celebrated that. I commended them, and I want to thank them for the efforts that they put in the children's education. Mr. Speaker, The laptops are already paying dividend. The facilities fees are paying dividend. The support for CXC, CXC fees are paying dividend. And Mr. Speaker, I want to say that publicly, um, Mr. Minister of Education, Parliamentary Rep for Denry North, we have a school in Babono that's waiting to cut the ribbon officially, because they might sneak in if you don't cut it. The Lager Primary School, Mr. Speaker, I taught at this school for eight years. And when I hear about the lifespan of Greenheart, this school was built, it's a Greenheart building, they call it Orinoco buildings, that came from Guyana. These were the prefab buildings. And the schools, the school at Lager and for us all, Mr. Speaker, got these prefab buildings. And they said the lifespan for these buildings were 20 years. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Lager School has been in existence for the last 53 years. 
the Green Heart Building. So it has survived 33 years beyond its life. And this government is ready to give the students at Lage a state-of-the-art primary school. So we are waiting for the Ministry of Education to do the honors so that these children, after waiting for 53 years, the parents will see that they have a decent environment to work. We look forward to that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we talk about education, Deputy Speaker, the, the Prime Minister in his budget this financial year said health and security are priorities for this financial year. But education has always been a priority. Always. The Prime Minister don't have to put it as a priority. It has always been a priority. And if we want to see good results, we want to see national development, we want to see productivity, you have to invest in education. And for a government that invests heavily in education, I commend the Prime Minister, the Cabinet of Ministers, for having the vision, the foresight to see it necessary to invest heavily in our human resources in the country. And for this, Mr. Speaker, I commend the Prime Minister for bringing that motion on the floor with the support of the Ministry of Education who has promised to deliver to the people that we will see education move tenfold. Mr. Speaker, while we look at development, Deputy Speaker, this morning I was fortunate to attend the sod turning ceremony of an agro-processing plant for women and girls. That is in keeping with the trend of this government where we provide opportunities for all. The government is looking at the youth economy. We are looking at micro, small, and medium-sized business. We are looking at the community tourism, Mr. Speaker. And that investment in education is another plus for the government in terms of what we are doing. I notice, Mr. Speaker, in addition to government, I don't know how the Prime Minister does it. He doesn't share all the secrets in cabinet. There are some he keeps to himself. You have to. <laughs> so where he gets the money, because what happened, Mr. Speaker, the government has given back so much to the people. Taking out tax on this, taking out, I say, but if he's not collecting tax, Mr. Speaker, how will he have money to give back? However, he finds a formula that works. And I need to commend the Prime Minister for using all the sciences that he know. He knows in financial management so that we work with him to deliver to the people of St. Lucia. So, Mr. Speak Deputy Speaker, I give my full support to this motion and let us see how it plays out in the public domain and let us guarantee St. Lucians a better future with quality education for all. I thank you. Mm -hmm.